the spirit said, brooding. His word was in my bones. Forget brooding. about acquisition. Acquisition Over is tertiary. The primary the goal brooding. of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Concentrated. Let your mind be holy. God's fire. The second dimension of encounters are called visionary encounters or experiences. Please write. So I told you that there are two kinds of encounters that the Bible tells us that believers can have. One is an encounter by the word light from scripture. Number two, visionary encounters or experiences. You may want to put in bracket word-based visionary encounters. And I'll explain to you why I spoke about it being word-based. Visionary encounters generally or experiences. Luke chapter 24. Let's begin our reading from verse 18. Luke 24, 18. Please write and let me have your attention. This is a very sensitive one that is going to be liberating for someone now. Visionary encounters. Now, this is the story of two men who were walking the street of Emmaus. Let's read together. Uh, well, I'll just read, but where I want you to, when I want you to join, I'll plead that you join. And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast thou not known the things that are come to pass there in these days? 19. And he said unto them, What things? Jesus now appeared to two men. Are we together? Who were walking the streets of Emmaus. They saw him as a stranger and so they were discussing the happenings. What had transpired three days before. And he just assumed, he just, you know, gave an impression like he did not know and he was listening to them. So they were narrating to Jesus now what happened to him. Are we together? And they said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. Oh, my goodness, I can stop here and that sentence, can we can do one week talking about that statement. Look at their testimony of Jesus. A mighty prophet in deed and a mighty prophet in word. So a true prophet must be sound in deed and word. Are you seeing that now? If you are a mighty prophet indeed alone, you are in trouble. You must be a prophet mighty indeed and mighty in word. First before God, then before all the people. 20. And how the chief priests and the rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. These guys must be great intelligent people. They know how to get information. I don't know if they were journalists. Look at how precise they were. And how the chief priest and the rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. 21. Let's hurry up. But we trusted that it had been which should have redeemed Israel. They were expressing their disappointment. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. 22. Yea, is and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early about the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, be patient, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels. A vision of angels. What did the angel say? That he was alive. What are your angels saying? The one you saw, what did they say? Many people will tell you, I saw angels. We see what angels say here. Every time angels appear, they testify that he's alive whether they appear in a healing ministry whether they appear in a prophetic ministry their assignment is to walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit and validate that he is alive if your own angelic encounter does not lead to the revelation of the fact that Jesus is alive go back and verify are we learning 24 and certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it even so as the women had said but they said they saw they said to him but him they saw not 25 and he said unto them "O fools Jesus is replying now and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets had spoken ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory 27 and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he has expounded unto them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. He used scriptures to talk about himself. 29. 
the Bible says, and they drew nigh unto the village, whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further, testing their passion, and they constrained him. Listen, you will learn a lot right now. And they constrained him, saying, abide with us, for it is towards evening, and the day is fast spent. And he went in to tarry with them. Reading to 32. And it came to pass, while he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave it to them. Let me not create controversy on that statement. I hope you know the one who is breaking this bread is the one who has now resurrected. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread, blessed it, break and gave to them. 31. The Bible says, and their eyes were opened. So they were seen, but they were blind. And they knew him, not they saw him. When your eyes are open in the spirit is beyond seeing him. You now know him. The purpose of the opening of that eyes of their understanding is to know him, not just to see him. They were already seeing him, but they saw a stranger. But when he opened their eyes, the Bible says they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. Look at this, verse 32, the last verse. It says, and they said to one another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked to us by the way and while he opened to us the scripture? Write this down, please. Write this down. There are three things that we learn from this visionary encounter that becomes the litmus test. Please, I will. The encounters, visionary encounters, are broken into many facets. I'm not doing that tonight. Hopefully, we'll have another series maybe on dreams, visions, and then we we'll teach that. But you know, there is what we call a dream. A dream is often called in the Bible, the vision of a night. Are we together? Then there are visions. Then there are trances. The Bible shows us these three. All right, are we together? Trances, visions, dreams. It shall come to pass in the last days, I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams. Are we together? So we know that there are trances, there are visions, and there are dreams. But there are three things that you can use to test any visionary encounter. Visionary encounters are simply supernatural encounters where you are transported to a realm beyond the physical realm and you are shown different levels of spiritual realities. Now, I have a teaching on the spirit realm. We'll soon have it before the year wraps up. So I don't want to go ahead of myself. But let me just give you just a background to understand this. You see, the spirit realm is an environment just like the natural realm. Are we together now? The spirit realm is a lot more superior to the natural realm. If you have the privilege to be caught up in the spirit and you look at earth, it just looks like a vapor. That's what the Bible says. This wall, as thick as this building is, from the realm of the spirit, all you will see is just like a vapor. Are we together now? Yes, the frailty of this realm with respect to the realm of the spirit. And then there are many differences between the natural realm and the spirit realm. For instance, in the realm of the spirit, I do not have to talk to you to communicate my thoughts to you. There is transference of thoughts. Are we together now? Yes. But in this physical realm, except God shows you, you cannot know what is in my heart till I verbalize it. Number two, in the physical realm, there is time and distance. In the realm of the spirit, that reality does not exist. It can be compressed. In a moment, you can be somewhere. If I need to walk from here to the back of that auditorium, I will need to walk physically, taking progressive steps. In the realm of the spirit, I am there immediately. Now, in the physical realm, the only way I know is by learning or by experimentation. But in the realm of the spirit, I can have the impulse of becoming that thing that I want to know about and suddenly transfer the knowledge from it to me. These are differences between the realm of the spirit and the physical realm. However, the realm of the spirit does not just mean 
God's domain. It is a realm that is accessible to all spirits. Demon spirits, familiar spirits, the Holy Spirit. So just because you were caught up with the realm, in the realm of the spirit, visionary encounters mandate that a spirit must be an, the agency that transports you there. Whether it is a demon spirit through divination, are we together? Or the Holy Spirit now having a godly encounter. And the advantage of the realm of the spirit is that in the realm of the spirit, there is the possibility of going into yesterday and tomorrow. In the physical realm, you cannot go into yesterday. In fact, what you call tomorrow is only today. What you really have is today. Am I right? Today was yesterday's tomorrow. Today was yesterday's future. Yesterday when you mentioned future, today was part of it. So what you really call the future, uh, from biblical intelligence, is just a mirage. The only thing you really have is today. The only way you can enter your future is when the future becomes your today. You, you get what I'm explaining now? Yes. But in the realm of the spirit, you can be caught up into yesterday. You can be caught up into tomorrow, literally. These are some of the differences. Now, three things. Let's look at it very quickly. Three things happen to the men in Emmaus that becomes a lesson for us to judge spiritual experiences, whether they be dreams, whether they be trances, whether they be visions. Number one, I wrote here still on that point too, that the first thing that happened to the people is that the encounter that they had with Jesus, it focused on Jesus and it brought them growth and understanding. Verse 27. The first thing that we need to learn is that their encounter was centered on Jesus and it brought them growth, it brought them understanding. Luke 24, now, verse 27. The Bible says, I'm beginning at Moses and all the prophets. He, being Jesus now, expounded unto him all things in the scripture concerning himself. That means no matter what your visionary encounter is, you don't have to see Jesus, no matter what it is, at the end of it, it should reveal Jesus, it should translate to your spiritual growth and bring understanding to you. Is someone learning? So number one, the encounter focused on Jesus and brought them growth and understanding. Number two, the encounter did not violate scripture, verse 25. That although it was Jesus himself they met, Hallelujah. The encounter did not violate scripture. He said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. 26 now. He says, Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Now, 27, you will understand. He says, I'm beginning from Moses and all the prophets he expounded to them in all scripture. That means even Jesus appearing to them did not neglect scripture. There are many encounters that make believers to ignore scripture. And they say, for me, I know what I saw. I do not need scripture. That is already an error. Even Jesus, when he appeared, he made reference to scripture. Are we together? Yes. The encounter did not violate scriptures. Number three, the third test is that the encounter, which is very important, the encounter affected their hearts and affected their passion. The encounter affected their hearts and affected their passion. Verse 29 to 32. 29 to 32. But they constrained him saying, look at this. These guys were on their way going to Emmaus. But they meet this stranger and when he began to expound scripture, they pleaded with him, don't leave us. They said, abide with us. An encounter that does not lead you to cry and say, Lord, abide with me. The hymn writer says it so beautifully. He says, abide with me. Fast falls the even tide. He says, the darkness deepens. Lord, with me abide. He says, when other helpers fall and comforts flee. He says, help of the helpless. Oh, abide with me. Abide with me. Hallelujah. 
for it was towards evening and the day was fast spent and he went in to tarry with them verse 30 look at this and it came to pass as he sat at meat with them they constrained him they brought him closer to them they sat down they were no longer walking in a hurry they had he had camped with them the bible says he blessed it and break it question was it his house was it not their house he came as a visitor look at the kind of honor and they gave he came as a visitor but now he was the one picking the bread blessing it and giving them they had now honored him beyond their feelings he had become the lord of their home verse 31 the bible says their eyes were opened and when the, the assignment of that encounter was fulfilled he vanished does your encounter lead you to be caught to the heart? Verse 32, I like what they said. Did our hearts not burn within us? When I had that encounter and saw the nations, did my heart not burn within me? Many people have encounters. Now, I, I say this respectfully speaking. I am amazed and surprised at many people who will say they see angels all the time and I'm not being sarcastic they see Jesus all the time and we check there is no burning of the heart there is no passion towards the things of God no we have a right to vet that encounter from the lens of Scripture I have had the honor of seeing Jesus it took me more than one year for me to recover I was not myself again nothing else in this life made sense again because of that encounter so when people say they saw him even in heaven they don't see Jesus that frequently go and read your Bible heaven we need to be careful and I'm saying this from a standpoint of love I, I will not I love the body of Christ I'm not one of the people that pride in the downfall of people we are wiser and, and we are more mature than that and I'm praying that the body of Christ progressively comes to a place of maturity so when God shows greater light it is for the advantage of the body not to be able to compare and contrast no that is childishness the purpose of growth and revelation is to edify the whole body are we together Generally speaking, when the love component is absent, whether in your correcting the body, in your communicating exegesis of scripture, you have defaulted because even faith works by love. Truth works by love. Knowledge works by love. Knowledge is not the zenith of transformation. The zenith of transformation is love. This may be a lesson for somebody to learn because there are so many preachers with a lot of zeal saying a lot of things and hoping they are pointing and correcting the body. Never forget the love component. Never forget the love component. If you end up tearing people down and try, you, whether you are right or not is not the issue. The love component is what makes you believable. The love component is the difference between you. If you now try to demonstrate superiority of understanding, it is not the vastness of knowledge that demonstrates that. It is the presence of love. Is someone learning? Very, very important. So their hearts born within them. Can I tell you? When you have a genuine, word-based, God-kind encounter, you will never be the same. Many of you here have had visions. Many of you here have had revelations. And because of our obsession for exploring the spirit realm, we no longer care the effect of our visions. There are people whose spiritual life started going down the day their eyes opened. And they started accessing all kinds of things familiar spirits extra biblical activities and they come back and practice have you seen people who will be walking close to a stream in the night and they'll say a voice told them go there you've seen people behave like that you see them walking alone or misbehaving or doing something they can even carry knife and want to kill themselves they will say a voice said it all experiences must submit to the word i repeat all experiences even if it is Jesus Jesus himself submitted himself to the word here to the men at Emmaus all experiences no matter how spectacular no matter how divine when you say you went to heaven submit your encounter of heaven to scripture so that you will verify where you went to 
Are we together? Yes. When you say you were caught up and you went somewhere, you may be sincere. If you've never had experiences in the spirit, the realm of the spirit is so vast. Listen, I can, if you have never, for instance, and respectfully so, if you've never been to Europe or France or US, somebody can stand and Photoshop something behind and just stand and, and say he was in front of um, some tower somewhere. If you have not been there, you don't have the system to verify whether this is just this is just art playing games with your mind or he actually was there so when people speak with audacity about the realm of the spirit outside of scripture there is trouble no matter how mysterious my visions are if you are doctrinally sound you can bring my vision and pieces it and check it against scripture and you will have a right to correct me in love and say i respect the 10 days you did in the spirit but that place you went is not heaven based on the truth that is written here because people have been transported all over the place in the realm of the spirit going to all kinds of place and they are coming back without conviction now again i remind you the purpose of teaching is for growth and maturity some of you are seated here right now and you know where you went to before you came for koinonia verify if it's not that listen if your heart is not leading you to god Oh, apostle hands were laid on me and i started having out of body experiences okay what did you see people come back and they see all kinds of things and jesus is absent and outside of that experience or they can have a similitude of jesus but the content of that communication is not consistent with scripture because satan can appear as an angel of light if Satan appears to you, he's not going to come as somebody with a horn, as cartoons put it. He's matter than that. He will come in and call you, my dear servant. Do you wear a robe and regalia and you kneel down and say, speak, Lord. Because most people do not have doctrinal accuracy. I've met spirits, so I've met demons. And unlike the way people think, I've met ugly demons. I've met demons that look like men, strangers. It is at the impulse of revelation and the exercise of authority that their true form is revealed. Yes. That you can meet smart demons looking like business people, but they are not humans. I mean what I'm saying. If I'm joking, I will tell you I'm joking. If you're with me, say amen. amen. Yes, sir. And now, we need to be careful so that we do not get ourselves emotionally pressured. There are believers today who have not had any, aside from dreams, they've not had any out-of-body experiences. And respectfully speaking, there are circles across the body of Christ that makes it look like once you are not having out-of-body experience, you are a child in the spirit. No, sir. Let's get back to doctrine. You see, eh? knowing scripture delivers us from a lot of spiritual childishness when you are ignorant of the word you will market a lot of you know it shouldn't be there is nowhere in scripture where out of body encounters is the biblical index for growth there are four index biblical indices that make for growth i have taught you number one is your love life number two is your degree of conformity to the image and the character of the christ in experience number three is the outworking of the power of god in and through your life are we together and then of course your level of transformation so i need to tell you this believers be at rest there is so much pressure to experience realities that are purported especially by the apostolic and the prophetic ministry so we have many people who get angry that's why people tell lies someone will just come and say i'm seeing just so that they can respect because if as a man of god we are five and four say they are seeing all the time and then meet the fifth one who is also praying I'm not seeing anything. Chances are excellent you will not invite me for a program. So the only way I have to join is to tell you I'm seeing something. No. No. Ladies and gentlemen, if you never see anything in your life, you can have encounters with the integrity of scripture. And out of that encounter, you will walk wonders, manifestations of the spirit. A generation 
whose focus completely goes to out-of-body experiences is a generation that will almost be lost already. Doctrine gives balance to everything. The Word of God brings, gives balance to everything. There are many, many appearances of Jesus to men, supposedly. When you vet it from the lens of Scripture and doctrine, you will find out that it was the devil disguising itself. Are we together? When the angel appeared to Mary, what was the content of the discussion? It was still a revelation of Jesus. These men were talking about angels, same thing. Every time, angels do not have a personal ministry of their own. Their ministry is derived from the ministry of the saints. Are we together now? They excel in strength, serving the purposes of God. So that you need to know what to cast. If you get up in the morning and you have dreams and visions, Apostle, I was sitting and the next thing I saw something quickly. Let your mind go to scripture. Use the lens of scripture and begin to judge all you saw and heard. I have taught you, it is written, is greater than I went. It is written, is greater than I saw. It is written, is greater than I heard. You can use it, is written to change what you saw. You, you can use it, is written to change what you heard. Apostle, I saw that my ministry has gone down. You are right based on that vision perhaps it's a revelation of tragedy satan is programming now use it is written your victory in christ as written and revealed to you by the spirit to now change that narrative when prophet isaiah met hezekiah and said put your house in order you will not leave he said all right god bless you prophet i respect you you go just leave me alone with god hebrews chapter 1 God who in sundry times and diverse manner spake to us in time past through the prophets hath in this last days, verse 2, spoken to us through his son whom he had appointed to be heir of how many things? All things. All things. Let's even read it to verse 3. By whom also, leave verse 2, let me finish verse 2. By whom also he had made the walls. Let's read verse 3 together if you are a believer. Ready? One to read. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. All things means all experiences too. Upholding all things by the word of his power. So all my experiences, no matter what they are, I gather them together and bring them through the filter of scripture. And I begin to edit the ones that are not word compliant and throw them with joy. Do you know, for many of you who have followed Papa Hagen of Blessed Memory, if you follow Papa Hagen's ministry, especially when he begins to move by the Spirit ministering, it is amazing how humble that man is and how, how disciplined he is to make sure his visions and his experiences are word compliant. You will see him prophesying and he will stop in the middle of his prophecy and say, no, 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 I reject that. That is not consistent with scripture. Then you will continue prophesying. That means he's not ashamed to say, look, I am human and I'm evolving in accuracy. And if for any reason I capture what is inconsistent with the word of God, I will cancel it in your presence before I continue. Hallelujah. This is where men void of ego, void of pride. They were determined to see the purity of the counsel of God as revealed in scripture that it comes to men. Listen to me. I, I respectfully tell you, the church in Africa, the church in Nigeria, we are doing well and God is granting us grace. I think the area where we need to come into compliance is a restoration of doctrine and a restoration of the supremacy of the word of God above all prophetic, apostolic, evangelical, pastoral experiences. Until we get to a point where we become students of doctrine and we get to a point where we respect the supremacy of the word above gifts, above experiences, there's going to be a serious problem. I have had many visions. There are many visions that led to the birthing of Koinonia. But the basis upon which we do what we do, it, it is written. Not where I went to. When I speak about my visionary encounters that led to ministry, they are only supporting structures. It is not because of those visions I'm doing what I'm doing now. Are we together? It is because I found in scripture the place written concerning me, and the role that koinonia has to play 
it says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit let it abide with you all he was speaking to the whole church not individuals so we must we must be restored to doctrinal accuracy and now with all due respect this is where we need to applaud and respect what we call with all due respect what we call the orthodox circles you know pentecostals and charismatics were quick to talk about we are saying oh there's no manifestation of the spirit but you doctrinal accuracy at least at the level that they can you find that there is there is structure and understanding of doctrine but pentecostals how do you say i'm not serious when somebody is falling down it doesn't matter by what influence i can say a lot of nonsense and once i wrap it up within jesus name and somebody is shouting it seems to justify so you find out that there is a lot of charismatism without methodical growth and maturity after three four five years in koinonia for instance believers still stunted the works of the flesh still alive no transformation no conformity no love no doctrinal accuracy no it ought not to be so. Is someone learning? However, visionary experiences are powerful and wonderful. They do something to your spirit man. Do not reject them. They are also a kind of experience and God desires to bring it to his people. As a man of God, upon the strength of visionary experiences, once your life is word-based, you do not fear supernatural experiences. You, you see me walk in the spirit as I minister to people, maybe during the miracle services. These things come because of the advantage. Once you have the foundation of the word, you do not need to fear visionary experiences because the word of God remains the confirmer. There are many things I see beyond the things I say. Some of them are unnecessary. The wisdom of, of scripture, for instance, says do not rebuke an elder in public. So if God shows me something about someone and that person is considered an elder, I will not announce it and speak here because it will bring more disaster to God's people than it will profit them. That's the advantage of scripture. Are we together now? If I call out a man and his wife, for instance, by prophecy and through the, the gift of word of knowledge and all of this, and if I see that there is an issue that can cause problem in their home and then it can spoil their name and their image, the wisdom of scripture mandates that we have been given the ministry of reconciliation. I rather wrap it up and tell them, come and see me in the office or see me somewhere not just to announce their issue and cause trouble they may be saved but you have created more damage especially in this social media world so the wisdom of scripture helps you to dispense visions with balance are you getting the point now if you see everything you if you say everything you see you have not grown in the spirit The real spirituality is not in the scene. It's the discipline to sieve out what comes from your mouth, to ensure that it ministers grace to the hearers, the Bible says. Is someone learning? Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire. Be concentrated. Let your mind be Holy God's fire. For